Welcome to Valuification of Things, your one-stop podcast on the discussion of value and especially business value. This is a forum where your host, Sri Sundaram, will be discussing topics on how to quantify value for practically any scenario. Along the way, we will have business leaders and subject matter experts describing their value journey. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this podcast episode. Hi there, I'm Sri Sundaram, your host. In today's episode, we'll continue our conversation with Lisa Yala and Mitali Bhartwaj, women entrepreneurs transcending their way into the coffee business. See how I did that? <laughs> In this episode, we discussed the various obstacles and challenges these entrepreneurs faced while establishing their business. We highlight the specific hurdles they encountered and how they overcame them using their engineering backgrounds. Next, we dive into topics such as sourcing beans, flavor development, manufacturing, and supply chain logistics. We also explore the importance of problem-solving skills. I'm sure they had their share of problems gained from their engineering education and how they applied them to their entrepreneurial journey. If you recall, Lisa and Mitali are budding technologists who got into the stale coffee syrup industry. Their words, by the way. So hello, Lisa and Mitali, and welcome back to Valification of Things. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us back. So Mitali, let me get to it right away. Uh, what are some of the main business challenges you have faced so far? Yeah, so I would categorize that into two main things. One, which is how far you, you can go on a bootstrap budget. And the second is, um, I want to say in, in a large, large general way of like avoiding burnout. So the first one kind of lends itself to the second one. Um, so with the bootstrap budget, we put in our own money and then we've run a friends and family round in order to get some capital to move the business along. And so when we first started, we did everything ourselves. I mean, we made the syrups in a commercial kitchen facility for nine or 10 months. We had to grind all the spices, bottle, label, and then we'd fulfill all the orders ourselves and drag it to UPS. I mean, I could go on about all the little things that we've done. And so we wear so many hats. And so sometimes it's how do we get as far as we can on a little budget, but also have lend us, ourselves the time to actually focus on on sales and marketing and the other levers that are important in a business. So really figuring out how to optimize that budget and time was a really like difficult challenge for us to overcome. But, you know, we finally got there a year into the business. We have a fulfillment partner, we have a manufacturing partner. Um, and now a lot of what we get to do is focusing more on pitches and sales. Um, and then, you know, as you can imagine from describing how labor intensive that first part was, um, just avoiding burnout in that process was really important. Trying to figure out like how quickly can we find the right partners to alleviate a lot of the labor intensive work so that we can really focus on scaling the business and scale is arguably the most important thing. So that's what we've been really focusing on now. And, you know, we're not able to have field sales specialists um, to help us out with sampling coffee shops and retailers. So that's really on Lisa and I to do that. And and that's really what we're focused on overcoming right now. Given that you are media savvy and aware of the social media influence, and you realize that uh, the social media influence is a tremendous business value asset. Um, how do you, Lisa, see uh, using social media influence uh, to develop your brand affinity that Mitali spoke about earlier? Definitely, yeah. Like Even as a Gen Zer, I'm still shocked at how powerful and how large you can grow a community and audience via social media. And I think we hope to not only increase our brand awareness and just get our name out there and have as many people know who we are, but more so build a community and a personality behind the brand. We want to be able to associate Mitali and I uh, with the brand in a way such that you don't just think of Transcendence Coffee, but you think of a woman-owned business that is pushing um, cultures and opening up to new cultures and trying new flavors and more so building a community in that aspect. How have you, Mitali, um, looked at uh, the R&D portion of developing new flavors? I, I get your first two flavors, right? It comes from a cultural backgrounds. Uh, easy to understand that. As you start to develop more and more flavors, what's your modus operandi in doing this? 
Yeah, so kind of piggybacking off what Lisa said on the power of social media, something that we really utilize is directly crowdsourcing what people want. And and that's how we know the direction of where the syrups are going to head. That and coupled with trends we're noticing at coffee shops. So really focusing on gathering that data and just directly asking our customers through recipes and different posts that we're making, what flavors would you want to see next? And in, in compiling that list, we can see a lot of commonalities. We can see the trends. We can see what people are excited to have and the representation they're looking for. And, and that's kind of what drives our R&D process in choosing syrup flavors. So what's your next flavor going to be? We're, we're dropping a new flavor at June and it's, uh, to, be re- it's to be announced. Oh, so yeah. s- s- stay tuned is what you think. Stay yes, tuned. Exactly. All right. <laughs> So, so given your engineering background, especially from a reputed school, right? Um, I suppose it's understandable uh, that you probably think about using technology to help ensure the quality of your product. Uh, first of all, I'm making the correct assumption. And if so, what are some of the technologies that you've been using to ensure the quality of your of your of your endeavor? Yeah, so um, it's pretty interesting because obviously Matali and I do not have food science backgrounds. And a really big thing for us is to create a product without any preservatives, artificial flavors. We like to say ingredients that you can pronounce all without struggle and understanding. Um, So by doing that, it was really a big learning curve on just how we create new foods, um, scalable and safe in a safe way. So there's a lot of different technologies that we use um, to kind of do that. Uh, One of them being water concentration. So making sure that something doesn't has a good enough water concentration to be able to still be a liquid syrup, but also be shelf stable. Yeah. And then piggybacking off of that, um, we obviously are an e-commerce or like largely D2C brand. So there is a general tech stack that we're using. And as we keep growing our e-commerce presence, um, a lot more sort of add-ons that we can add onto that. So we use Shopify, we use Klaviyo for SMS and email marketing. Um, and there's a few others that we're like excited to kind of tap into for more like post-purchase and cross-sell and, and different aspects of just D2C marketing and sales. So obviously e-commerce is the engine that's, that's Shopify is the engine that's running us and, and that's what makes this all even possible. So thank you both for enlightening us with your challenges and experiences. Uh, when we come back, I'll ask Lisa and Mitali, what role do they see for data and AI in their budding business? This portion of the podcast is brought to you by the Holistics Group. At Holistics, we simplify the complexity of your digital transformation change through organization culture change infused with technology innovations. Visit us at theholisticsgroup.com. Welcome back. Today we have Lisa Yala and Vitali Bhartwaj, two women entrepreneurs of Transcendence Coffee, coming back to discuss more about their business challenges and how they've used technology to solve for some of them. To continue with the technology discussion, Lisa and Mitali, where do you see data and AI fit into your business vision for transcendence? How are you using it so far? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned, a lot of our R&D and new flavor process is driven by crowdsourcing. So something you'll notice as uh, the way social media works and the, the way the algorithm works is a lot of how a, a video goes viral or a brand really gets a lot of traction is through interactions and engagement. And the comments really drives what we know to be where we want our brand to be headed. So a big part of what we're doing right now is just data collection holistically, which is what do people want? And and that's the basis of building something for a consumer and not just building a good product. So we wanna stay tied into that. And then ultimately that is something we talk about, which is would it be possible for us at scale to make syrups that are customizable? Or would it be possible for us to make syrups that specific coffee shops want or co-branded products that specific coffee shops want um, based on where they're seeing traction. And a lot of that is just based on data, but that's something that we would ideally like to be headed towards. Um, And at the moment, we're just focused on understanding our customer right now. Yeah. And to add on to that a little bit, kind of touching on um, 
kind of social media and algorithms and how it pushes uh, content out to users. I think being very strategic in how we do that also really helps build our community and a loyal group of customers uh, by using certain keywords or creating certain content. We're able to access people and customers who are specifically interested in us and maybe relate to our brand's mission in ways that I think marketing has not been able to do before, which is a really powerful tool to take advantage of. So now that you brought about marketing, uh, Lisa, so how do you see large language models uh, like like ChatGPT, for instance, and and Bard uh, play into marketing and business development? Um, Where have you planned, have you used them so far or do you plan to use them in the future? Yeah, um, kind of similar um, to previously, haven't haven't used it too much and specifically uh, building our business, but I definitely see it becoming a very big part of our future. And I think as we become more connected to information and more elevated forms of data, I think it'll start touching every aspect of people's lives, including coffee. And I think the bigger we can build our brand and our awareness, hopefully we can be integrated into that. Yeah, actually, I was going to say, just like Lisa mentioned, that is definitely something we think can be a really big part of our future. And I think a big aspect that it could play into our business specifically is shared audiences. So if we're able to say, what do people who like X flavor, what else are their interests or what else are their, um, you know, favorite recipes or what are their favorite products? We're able to find shared audiences with other product categories. And that helps us kind of lean into collaborating with them or even building products or giveaways with them on our digital strategy. So using that to kind of leverage what specific demographic and psychographic interests there are can really help us actually get to the customers, you know, focus on purchasing and what they want to buy. So that is going to be a huge aspect, I think, ultimately. That is a very insightful use of of these large language models. So thank you for coming on both these episodes. Thank you for your time uh, in helping us understand your journey and your motivations for Transcendence Coffee. I wish you the best and would like to have you come back here as successful millionaire businesswoman uh, <laughs> talking to us more about the business value of it all. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us today. Thank you. So thank you for watching this episode. Today we had Lisa Yala and Mitali Birdwatch, coffee baristas and entrepreneurs talking to us about their transcendence journey into coffee. In part two of this discussion, we got into greater details on the value proposition of the business, the challenges, and how they use technology to solve for some of them. In future episodes, we'll continue to dwell on the valuation of things with other thought leaders and industry executives. Stay tuned. Thank you for listening to this episode of Valuation of Things. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please share this episode with your friends and family, and don't forget to leave a review. We're always looking for ways to improve and bring in the best content possible. If you want to be featured on this podcast, please drop us a line at podcast at valuification.com.